Um, all right, starting off, welcome. It's 2022. This is my first Google training session uh, digitally for 2022. I'm very excited to be here with you today. We are talking applied digital skills and doing some really cool stuff with three different applications today. So we're going to be working in Google Sheets, Google App Script, which is a little bit of coding, but it's very, very light coding. And if you're going, oh, I've never done coding before, don't worry. This is very straightforward coding. And I think anyone could do it from a kindergartner up through somebody in the you know older age bracket. So definitely don't worry too much about that. And the third one we're gonna be using is Google Maps and Google My Maps. So we're gonna be doing three different things and we're gonna be all of it building up to creating an, a guide for an area. Now that guide for the area could be a guide for like places and uh, like tourist attractions in your area, but it could also be volcanoes in a science class or famous uh, locations for a book in an ELA class or battles in a social studies class. Um, so lots of different options there. And we're gonna look at some of those remixes in here in just a minute. So I uh, already dropped in the chat, go.uen.org and then slash lowercase b, uppercase t, number nine. And we're gonna jump over to that website right now. Um, and I'm gonna show you a few things that are important on there before we get started with digging into the lesson. So if you've never been here for Applied Digital Skills or if you haven't seen the videos, um, in, this, uh, in these courses, we spend about 30 minutes going through the actual lesson together. And if you would like to follow along, that's great. Or if you just wanna to listen to it in the background, that's great. Or on top of that, if you uh, just wanna kind of watch me do it so you can kind of get those ideas, that's great. Um, we've got lots of different lessons that are, we've done so far. So first of all, there's the, the URL for the website. My name is Matt Winters, UEN instructor. Here's all my information if you need to contact me. Hugely collaborative, would love to have more uh, Google trainings across the state. So feel free to uh, share my information out with anybody that you think would love to have me come out and meet with your teachers. Um, Twitter, Instagram, don't judge me for my Instagram. I'm terrible at Instagram. I would love to do more with it, but I just find a lack of time. Underneath that, you're gonna find all of the lessons for this series. Um, we've done four of them already. So build a portfolio with Google Sites, if then storytelling, research and develop a topic and creating an animation with Google Slides. So those all are done. And if you click any of those links, it will take you to the site with the video walking you through the 40 minute lesson plan to show your teachers how to do this process, as well as information from uh, Applied Digital Skills, a starter project, some resources from GG Utah and UEN, and then some remix options, some ideas from uh, GG Utah and UEN to take this to another step, um, which we're gonna do a lot of that today. So look for those uh, four, and then we've got ours today, which we'll get to in a second, which is creating a guide to an area with Google Apps Script. Next week, we'll be doing machine learning, uh, create a comic strip the week after, and then understanding your digital footprint. Um, and after that, we're taking a couple week break and we'll come back with a new series uh, mid-February. Underneath that, you're gonna find a weeklet of UEN tools, our social media, Google's, uh, our link for UEN's Google website, and then the EDU and 90 for December. So all of this stuff is great supports for your teachers. Feel free to share this website with them so that they can get that as well. Um, all the lessons are also on the left-hand side in this little menu. So if you're a little lost, feel free to jump over here and grab onto that. And uh, 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 we're gonna be on the page right here that says create a guide to an area with Google Apps Script. So again, URL go.uen.org slash lowercase b, uppercase t, and the number nine. And you will be able to jump on here and get all the materials as well. So underneath that, I'm gonna go ahead and create, click create a guide to an area with Google Apps Script. If there's any issues as we go on, I've, uh, if you have any questions or worries, feel free to drop them in the chat. If for some reason a file isn't working for permissions, please let me know. Um, I'll be checking those again after the session to make sure everything goes well. With Google and permissions, you know how it goes sometimes. All right, on this page, again, you're gonna find a link to right now the uh, lesson plan from Google Applied Digital Skills, which we'll get to in a second. Once we're done with this video and it's posted on YouTube, you'll find that video there so you can share that with your teachers. Underneath that, you're gonna have our starter project, which we'll get into in a few minutes. This is actually a, a, a document that's a force copy. Um, it's just a template sheet that any teacher can use, um, hand off to their student. It's got all the information that they're asking you to plug into in the lesson plan and applied digital skills and makes it really simple for it. On top of that, for app script, we're all gonna be using this uh, script that is free uh, to copy from uh, Google. And rather than uh, have you go search that every time, I just linked it directly on the site. So right here, and then you're just gonna grab this custom dialog down here. We'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. Again, if you've never done HTML coding, that sound looks, it looks 
a lot, like a lot. Um, if you've done HTML coding, you know it's not a lot. Um, and we're only going to be doing a couple things with it as we go through. And so we'll, we'll dig into that. We're also going to talk about a non-coding option. So if your teachers aren't 100% not comfortable having coding in their class, there is a way to do this activity without coding. So we'll work with that as well. It just cuts off, I think, one of the coolest layers of the project. Under that, you if you're uh, need some refresh on Google Earth and Maps. Here's a great video from our prior series in the fall on uh, open training on Google Earth and Maps for your teachers. And then some remix options, which we'll look at later. One for science, one for social studies, one for English. Um, each one has a link to a template that has some changed dialogue points, but basically very similar. So you're, you're all good to go. Oh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Joy and Jason, for sharing that with Pam. I'm glad that we were able to get that out to you. Um, so let's jump in. So today, what we're going to go into is, again, the Applied Digital Skills lesson. It's linked here or in this picture, so you can grab that really quickly. And that will take you directly to Applied Digital Skills page. Now, just a two-minute aside here, if you've never used Applied Digital Skills, students can use this and teachers can use this either logged in or logged out. If they log in teachers to a teacher's class, a student will be able to track their progress and the teacher will be able to track their, or track their progress and be able to turn in materials to them as well. So it's got some benefits there, um, but if your district or if you are uncomfortable having another platform for students to turn in work, all of the materials are accessible without logging in, makes it really simple and easy. There are hundreds of lessons in here. I think last count they had 186 or something like that, and it keeps adding. They're getting more and more lessons for all the different platforms in Google. So I always tend to go into the Browse Lessons tab and check that out really quick and add, uh, see what new lessons they have there um, that I could apply to my classroom or that I could share with teachers who need a little boost on digital skills. And remember, with Applied Digital Skills, we're teaching teachers uh, we're giving lesson plans to help teachers teach the digital skill, not the content. So the teachers can be an expert in their content area and let Google help you teach the applied digital skills, um, which is fantastic and amazing for a lot of teachers. So with that, we're going to jump into this lesson. All of the applied digital skills, they have a nice start jump page and you just hit start and drive this into the video. Underneath that, you have what activities and digital tools you're going to need, how long it's time to complete. I will say most students will probably need four to six hours for this activity. So that's, you know, a week of content um, for a 45 minute class. And I would recommend this maybe it's uh, upper elementary, middle school, maybe lower high school, um, depending on your course material. And so that's something to consider here as well as your audience, who you're going to be working with. I will say a student who already has some coding experience will probably fly through this. Um, but as far as generating information for the assignment, you'll see here in a few minutes, it takes a little bit of time. These are the skills that they're gonna learn, uh, data representation, sorting and filtering, and spreadsheet organization. On top of that, they're also gonna learn some geographic knowledge, but also you could apply content knowledge through social studies or science, ELA, fine arts. I think this lesson has a lot of legs as far as applying to a lot of content areas. So it's a matter of having that creativity and allowing for flexibility with your students. Underneath that, it's gonna show you all the lessons. And this one happens to have, I believe, yep, five different areas. So it has start building your spreadsheet guide, add filters and a custom rating scale, code interactive images, make a custom map, and then the unit wrap up. Now, one other thing that if students do, or if teachers choose to have their students log in in their class, these do have check quizzes throughout to make sure the students actually understand the skills that are being asked of them. And so uh, I think that's an extra great add-on if you have the time, but also in the unit wrap up, I'm just gonna click on this one. They also have extensions for this activity. So if you have students who are finishing early and, with, and you'd want to help them, encourage them to keep going, um, this is a way to have some extensions where they actually walk you through a couple other ideas that could add on to the lesson, which is incredible. It's very, very cool. All right, with that said, I'm gonna, so we're gonna skip going through the videos, but just know that all the applied digital skills when I hit start, they all start the same. They have over here on the left hand or right hand side, um, materials to track the students work throughout some ideas, maybe some simple templates and things like that. Video in the center and also teachers can download, change the playback speed, add captions, picture in picture. So it's very friendly for students and for teachers. So we're not gonna go through the videos because that would take an enormous amount of time. We're gonna go ahead and jump into our template. So first of all, before we do that, I just want to show you where we're headed, because this is kind of a big project. 
Um, and you might want to, if you're going to follow along with me, go ahead. You can start a new temp. You can grab our template right down below where it's a starter project. Click on the picture or the link. Um, but underneath that, um, this is kind of where we're going. So this is a final project. I did this a couple of days ago to get prepared for this lesson. We're going to be building an area guide. And in this case, I'm a, if you can't tell by the CDs behind me, I'm a huge record fan. I love buying vinyl and CDs. It's been something I've been doing since I was 13 years old. And then I have thousands of them at my house. And so, um, and yes, they are organized alphabetically and chronologically. It's insane. It's really fun. Um, so I decided to do a record store guide. That was my decision for my local area guide. We're going to be adding a couple of headers. We're going to be adding some content to our page. Um, in terms of some section headers and then some area content as well. So things like um, different addresses, uh, uh, we're gonna be looking at different areas to work with. Um, and the goal being is that we really want our students to be able to show us some geographic knowledge in our content area. So on top of that, we're gonna be adding and scripting in some street view images for our larger students. So uh, for instance, we're gonna be able to add some street view images at the very end that will script in through a side menu that I title street view. And so if I go ahead and click on any of the, the uh, HTML code over there, click street view, it's going to add a street view image of the record store right there for uh, our student or our, our viewers, which is really cool. On top of that, we're gonna create a map uh, through my maps of these locations so that we can share that as well. So lots of little detailed work. Um, go ahead and refresh that page. You should have access uh, to the template now. I apologize for that. I'll fix the uh, uh, remix templates uh, at the end of the session today. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that start project, get a copy myself. So you should be able to click that link now and go ahead and make a copy. And as you can see, I've already done a little bit of legwork for the students and for the teachers. So we've got location name, address, description, category, rating, and then two optional categories. This is up to the teacher's discretion. It might be uh, any number of things. So for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and delete off of my copy these two columns because I, I don't need those right now. What I do need are the five that are sitting right here. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, go ahead and establish what is our content. So I've already decided I'm going to do, you know, record stores. Okay. Um, but you could choose locations of volcanoes, uh, famous fault lines, uh, famous uh, literary locations, um, any number of things, but we need a few basic categories. So the first one is we need students to have a location name, address, description, and category and a rating. Now we are going to create categories and ratings. We're going to do drop down lists. Um, we're, we'll do that here in just a few minutes. So first thing, if you're following along with me, is that we're going to go ahead and put a couple locations in there. And this is where students flex their uh, knowledge about Google search. So we're going to go to Google Maps. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and grab my favorite local record store, which is Lavender Vinyl here in Ogden, Utah. Here's there. So we're going to go to Google Maps, pick one of our locations, and we need to go ahead and grab some information from there. So the first one is obviously our address. So I'm going to go back here, go back to our template and control C, control V, my address right there. I'm going to add the location name, which is Lavender Vinyl. I'm going to add a quick description as well. Best local uh, record store in Northern Utah. I do believe that. <laughs> I love that store. Catch me there on a Saturday, probably pretty easily. So there's that right there. So now we have the three basics. We're going to go ahead and add category and rating in a little bit. Okay. Now from here, we want to do a couple things. So the first one is we're going to play. Google wants the students to be able to play a little bit with formatting. So they want, them to, uh, want us to understand formatting on a Google Sheet. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight by dragging across, clicking on the first box and dragging across all the rows here to E. You can see they're, they're all highlighted because they're blue. And I'm going to go up to the top. This is how you are able to do formatting in mass. You can do all of them at once. The other way you can do it is if you're going to add more columns like F and G down here is you can just go ahead and click on the one and notice it highlights everything across. Now we can change the font. I really love this font, Crimson Pro. I'm going to make it really big. So I'm going to go with 24. I'm going to bold it. And I 
I think that's good. I think that's good. I am also at this point going to center and my text. So that's something that teacher students, it's really helpful for them to understand how to do that. And as you can already see, already see some of the, the categories, I went ahead and just double clicked here where you see double arrows at the top. What that does, I'll just show you really quick, is it resizes the column to match what the size of the largest item in there is. So it makes it easier to see and our students they'll, they'll find that super helpful. The next thing that Google wants you to know, and you can go ahead and grab multiple, uh, go ahead and change the, the columns as well here, uh, just so you have the same font and size. I'm just gonna grab as many as I think I might need down the line. I'm gonna change my font again to crimson text. I'll do size 14. Uh, and we're, we'll just leave it the same size or the no, non-bolded. Again, you know, double space so I get that. All right, so now I have this all set. That's That's like the first, half of the first part of this lesson. So one thing that they do want you to do is change your formatting just a little bit. So there's some colors there. So we're gonna go down to format and go to alternating colors. So when we do that, this allows all of, oh, I go, went ahead and clicked on the wrong uh, thing there. Okay, control Z, cause that's your best friend in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on just the top right, go to format and go to alternating colors. Google has some default boxes where this allows us to see, uh, create some nice looking headers and it does it automatically as you add more text, which is really, really nice. Or if you have specific colors you'd like down below, you can go ahead and use uh, the color and the font to change whatever you want. Right now, I just like this blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that, hit done. And now I have a nice alternating colors that makes it a little bit fancier and, and kind of nicer to view, especially if this is gonna be something that we're gonna share with an audience down the line. Now, that's pretty much all of unit one right there um, inside this lesson. The next thing that they want us to do is be able to add a rating guide to this um, in a drop down for category and for rating. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and go create a brand new sheet on the second tab here. So I've already done that for you in the template, it's called rating. And just to kind of give you an idea, if we go ahead and hit the drop down right here, if we hit the plus sign, it gives us a new tab, new sheet. But if we go ahead and hit the, the arrow down right here, we can rename any of our sheets. So if you're doing this from scratch, these are two skills that you definitely wanna teach your students, adding a new sheet, renaming the sheet. But I've already done that for you. We're on slide two or sheet two, and you can see that I've already added a one through five, very nice guide here for you. So we got okay, number one to makes your trip number five. So we're going to add a category list too in the second one. So there's three categories of record stores in my mind. There's vinyl only, mostly vinyl, and then vinyl, CDs, and uh, other. So like video games, books, those sorts of things, more like a media conglomerate store. So for your students, this would be a great place for them to think about what kind of information they're plugging into their area guide. Are they making parks? Are they talking about parks or like amusements? Are they jumping into uh, maybe like types of volcanoes or different books that they've read throughout the year? Or are they doing different chapters? It, 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 there's tons of different things that you could do with this, but having a category list is super helpful. So now to jump back over here, we need to add these to our categories and our rating sections. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on my cell there that's underneath categories. I'm going to go up to data. Um, data validation. That's what I was looking for. Sorry, it was right there staring me in the face and I was like, uh oh. So you're going to go to data, data validation. And what that's going to allow you to do is create a range list from a range. So there's many options here under criteria. We're going to create a drop down from a list from a range. And then right here, rather than entering it by hand, we're going to go ahead and click the select data range button, which is going to allow us to go through our form, go back here and we're doing category first. So these are my categories right here. So B1 to B3, B3. hit OK. Go in here. It's going to say show drop down list and cell. Click save. And now if we go back to our area guide, you can see now there's a little drop down here and I can go ahead and add the drop down. This is mostly a vinyl only store, so there it is. And notice it kept my formatting of text and size and, and uh, font. To do the next one, we'll go back, click on right there. We're gonna go ahead and hit uh, data, data validation, list from a range, same thing. 
go back to our rating guide. This time we're going to grab the first five over here, hit OK, show list uh, in a drop down, click save, go back. And now we have that drop down right there. This one's make makes your trip. I love the store. So I'm going to go ahead and change that really quickly. So now we've got two drop downs. And what's nice is that when we click on that, we can go ahead and copy that to more sets as we go down. And then we can change that one if we want to. So it makes it really easy to add more data down the line and makes it really easy to share that uh, with other columns and other uh, uh, sites as well. So that is a big part of part two to get this particular section done to do these drop downs um, in your session or in, on your form. Now, the next one is that we want to be able to create our side panel. So going back to my finish guide here, if I go up here to my, my uh, top bar, my toolbar up here, you'll notice that I have a custom menu click that says uh, street view. So I'm going to go ahead and click on one of my uh, HTML codes down here, click street view, click street view again. It's going to pop up with a sidebar that has a map, uh, a picture of the uh, uh, 360 degree shot of the front of this record store. So that's what we're going to create next using app script. Okay. So in order to do that, the first thing you notice that we need to do is add a new column next to rating. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to click on this on F right here, and I'm going to add a new heading just called image. Okay. So there it is. And notice with the formatting, it goes ahead and adds it in blue, which is really nice. So it matches the rest of my formatting. Okay. And now I have a, a new cell underneath there. Okay. Right now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab, go back to my Google Maps that I left open. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the picture of the store right here. Okay, this will take you to all the pictures that are Google or in Google Maps of that location. Now, there's some really cool pictures in here, the record store, the records they have available. But know that we need all only the street view and 360 degree view of that particular uh, location. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that. I'm going to go up here to the top right or left corner where it has the address and Google. Hit the three dots, share embed image, and we're going to go ahead. It's going to leave me on link, but I actually want to go to embed. We're going to change this to small just so it'll fit in our little side frame, and we're going to copy the HTML code. Okay. We'll go back over to our form, control V. And now that is in this location for us in that frame. Now, if you want to make this all look really good, you could give it a little bit more space here. So like that, and then go ahead and change this particular panel to on the text wrapping to wrap around just like that. So it makes it a little bit nicer. Um, when you do that, you might want to change your cells here as well to be vertically aligned in the center just to make it look a little bit nice as well. It's up to you how you do it. Again, visually visually pleasing is what we're looking for. Got to pause for just a second. Google, part of the, the project here that Google looks for is they want you to go out and find more sites at this point. So this is where the students would spend a lot of time doing their research, going out and finding more locations. They recommend having 10. On my final example, I only have uh, seven, I believe. Um, just because I ran out of time uh, while I was making this to find more record stores. But having the students go out and find 10, 20 items is going to take a large amount of time, about four to six hours that we talked about at the beginning. So that's, this is kind of where you would say, okay, students, you got this far. Let's pause before we do the app script. Go out and find the rest of your locations. And that might take a class period or two to get done, okay? Depending on student framework, how many you're asking for, all those jobs. All right, now we get into the fun part, which is scripting, okay? So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and hit up here at the top in the video. Oh, sorry, can I walk through uh, getting the embed code? Absolutely, so I'm just gonna go back to my map really quick. So this is just Google Maps. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, search for the location. So I went to Lavender Vinyl here in Ogden, Utah, and I just clicked on the picture here in the top, um, and that gives me pictures of the location. And then we, uh, across the top here, you're going to find a link on pretty much every single location that says street view and 360 degree. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. There's only one here. Some shops have, or some locations have many 360 degree pictures or street views. So just kind of be aware of that. You could probably choose a couple and then go ahead and you go to the box here with the address, click the three dots, share or embed image. We're not going to go with send a link. We're going to go embed a map. We're going to change this to small and then copy HTML. That's it.
Now, for those of you that are maybe advanced users on this, I'm glad you asked this question because if you're thinking advanced here, anywhere, anything that you can embed in HTML, you can use in this project. So instead of map views, you could embed a website or you could embed a YouTube video or a song or anything that you can put in an iframe HTML code. So there's tons of ways to do that. In fact, we'll show you how to do a remix with this if we have time on YouTube at the very, very end. We're gonna be pressed for time with this one. All right, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and hopefully that answers your question. If there's anything else I can help with, go ahead and toss in the chat really quick. All right, so what we're gonna do next is go ahead and jump into let's do the script, which always sounds like it's the hardest part, but it's actually not too bad on this project. Most students will be able to get this in maybe a couple minutes, okay? And rather than go through uh, the steps that Google goes through, I'm gonna show you top to bottom the different things that I would do very, very quickly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and go to uh, extensions and you're gonna go to app script, okay? Now, when I go to app script, it's gonna go ahead and pull up this box, okay? Now, you're gonna to need to authorize app script the first time you run your code, just so you know. So your students are gonna to have to do the same thing. You might even need to check and make sure that app script works in your district, okay? Some districts have that locked down, so check that out uh, with your students first. First thing I'm gonna do is delete all the code that's already there. You don't need that information. What we do need, going back to our site here, underneath starter project, there's a link that says link to Google App Script custom menu code. So that will take you to uh, this page right here. It's dialogues and sidebars and Google Workspace documents. Down at the very, very bottom, you're gonna find um, a set of code that's under custom dialogue. And here it is right here. So don't do what I'm gonna do here for a second is just highlight and then control C, control V. In fact, you can just go ahead and hit right here where it says copy code sample. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna drop that control via into my code here. Now, from there, most of this is already written. We're gonna change just a couple things um, to make this function really well for our, uh, our code here, okay, for our sheet. The first thing, so Google goes first to show you how to get the HTML service right here and to change this thing that says page here. This allows it to open inside of your form or of your sheet, all the information that you have there. Then it goes up and shows you how to change custom menu, show dialog, and down here, my custom dialog, okay? So what we're gonna do to start off with is I'm just gonna go ahead and change custom menu here. And I'm just gonna add the name that I added on the other one, which is straight view. I'm gonna go ahead and show dialog, and I'm gonna change that to straight view. And then down here, my custom dialogue, I'm gonna change that again to street view. Now you could have three different things. So street view, maps, and then here's my awesome map. Whatever you put inside of these little tiny uh, quotation marks is going to be quoted at the top of your menu right here. So street view, street view. And then if I open that up, it's gonna grab street view right there, okay? So, just because I wanna be able to show you the exact code, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my finished code on this. I'm gonna go ahead and go to app script again um, for my finished. And they add this little bit of code. I'm gonna drop this in the chat. And if you're following along, you can go ahead and use this as well. This is the code that they recommend to go into that location. So what it is, is it's spreadsheet app dot get active range, open close parentheses, period get display value, open, close parentheses, okay? So I'm gonna copy that for myself as well, I already just did. And I'm gonna go here and where we're gonna put that is right here where it says page. And we're gonna eliminate both the page and the quotation marks. And I'm just gonna check that to make sure, yep, we're good to go, okay. All right, so go ahead and hit control V and there it goes. Okay, now we can also get rid of uh, these particular headers right here. And I just wanna make sure we're gonna just, I'm gonna, yep, go ahead and just grab this particular bunch of code right here to make sure I'm good to go. Cause this is where I get a little worried that I've done it a little bit improperly and I wanna make sure I get it right. All right, so with that said, you can go ahead and copy this code as well. I'll put this into the chat and I'll put it on the page as well in its entirety. 
Again, you can change street view to street view uh, to whatever it might be for you. And I'll put this on the site as well for the final code. So at this point, now I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna hit run. And it's gonna give me an execution log down here. Now, the first time you run code, if you've never done it before in app script, it's gonna ask you to authorize that code. Um, so it's gonna come up with a pop-up, ask you to authorize, and then you're gonna go, okay? So right there, see, authorization required, required review permissions. You're gonna choose your account. You're gonna go ahead and hit allow. And then it's gonna run your code, it executed and it's good to go. So if I go back to my area guide, I'm gonna go ahead and you can see I've got now a menu for street view. If I hit street view and I've clicked on my image, I'm gonna hit street view. Oh, script not found show dialogue. So I gotta go ahead and eliminate show dialogue. Let's see where that is. Oh, show dialogue. So what did it change? This is one of the cool things about doing coding is that sometimes you forget what's gone. So it's actually show sidebar. Cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. I'm gonna hit run. And we're gonna go back over here, dismiss. Let's try it out again. There it is. And takes a second sometimes to load the image, but it'll pop up right here as you saw my other ones. And then we're good to go. So now we have a side menu and we can go ahead and add more HTML codes down the side here. And we'll look at YouTube videos here in just a second. The last part of this project that we can work with or that Google works with is that they want you to add a new uh, column or sorry, row up here. So I'm gonna add a row above and then merge those cells together. So that's highlight all of them, hit the button right here that says merge cell. It looks like two arrows in a box. And when we do that, we're gonna go ahead and show or check out this amazing map. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some more formatting to it. I'm just gonna center it really quickly and we're good to go. Now, from here, now we're gonna go create a brand new Google My Map, okay? So if you've never used My Maps, you can go ahead and search My Maps. It should be the first thing that pops up or you can go into your drive and click uh, Create New and then hit More and then you should have My Maps in there if it's part of your account. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Create a New Map. And now I have uh, just a blanket Google map. I can, there's no other users on there. I can start manipulating it in any way I want. But how Google uses it is, and how they're using this in this project is going ahead and hitting import. And we're gonna import from Drive our data set that we've been working with, which is our, our uh, sheet file. So here's that copy of an area guide that I've been working with. I'm gonna hit select. And then it's gonna ask you two questions. The first one is, where would you like to place your markers? Well, I think that would probably be our address. So where this is located at. What would you like the title of your marker to be? Well, I want my location name. I want people to see lavender vinyl up front. So I hit finish and it takes a second depending on how big your data set is, but then it marks off that point and adds all of your data set as well. So here's a, here's a remix option. If you, if you have a teacher that is not interested in doing coding with their students, doing the app script work, there is a way, this is the jump that they could make is instead of having any of the image work and the app script is just have them jump directly to importing their sheet into my maps. And so it gives them the same idea. Then they can put the sheet and the map on a Google site or on a doc or whatever it might be and turn it in. And it's a great way to remix it as you work through. All right, so now I have my awesome little map here. I can go ahead and share that by going ahead and clicking up here where it says share. And I'm gonna title this uh, record store map. Click okay. I'm gonna change it to anyone with a link can view, save, close and go back. And I'm gonna copy that link using control K to paste my link in there. When I hit apply, now I have a link to that map. And now I have a guide, albeit to one location, to uh, record stores in, in Utah. Um, if I go back to my final version, you can see this one's a little bit more complete, has a lot more of the iframe uh, HTML code, has a lot more record stores. And this is a, an activity that students could do, teachers could do with a lot of different content areas. Going back to our site that has all the information on it, 
Um, the remix options, which again, I'll, I'll make sure these are, are shared properly so you can get access to them. The science one focuses on uh, doing uh, uh, just a tour of famous science locations. Um, so I could see this being like volcanoes or fault lines or famous scientists, famous labs, uh, locations of scientific marvels, whatever it might be. The second one for social studies follows a very similar tilt of being able to have students create a guide of facts uh, of locations maybe associated with a historical unit, maybe um, teaching about Utah and explorers, or maybe you're teaching about the Civil War and famous battles or whatever it might be, or maybe you're just teaching geographic knowledge and you want them to learn about land masses and landforms. So you can have them do location name and then I had fact one, fact two, fact three. So students are having to do a little bit more research on there. And the last one, perhaps my favorite one is this uh, English remix because I'm an ELA teacher by trade. Um, in there, I, I, this is a project I've done very similarly with my students, location, address, and then I had them write a chapter of their book and included uh, their story and a song link to YouTube instead of an image. So people can read their story on their Google uh, sheet, listen to the song on their sidebar, and they can add some optional categories as well. So it creates a whole multimedia experience and storytelling for their students. So with that said, hopefully that's, I, I went through this super quick and there's a ton of stuff here. Um, feel free to explore it more. And if you have questions, feel free to reach out. The biggest thing here is that there is a lot of legs in doing app scripting. And as you can see, doing it once, I was still a little bit shaky. There's a few things that I probably could have done a little bit better, um, but you get better and better the more you do it. And that's the thing with coding is that the more you do it, just like any language skill, you're gonna get better and better at it. Um, and so digging into that, working with Google, following a lesson plan, students will be able to do it foolproof all the way through. And again, in about four or five class periods. But there is that cut. If teachers are, are not comfortable doing coding or don't have enough time in their schedule to do coding, have them jump from Google Sheet to the map and have them create that tour, that guide, um, and you know, smash uh, some uh, geographic knowledge and, and be excited about it. So with that said, folks, again, the site that you can work with here is at go.uen.org slash lowercase b, uppercase t, and the number nine. Uh, feel free to share this with whoever you'd like. As we uh, go on to the next lesson, um, this video will be up later this week, early next week, so you can share this out with other classes, other teachers, uh, whoever you'd like to work with. And again, if you have questions or worries, feel free to email me and let me know that you, uh, if you have any worries.